I have been totally impressed at how South Africans can really come together in the midst of a crisis. When there's a medical crisis, knowledge, evidence, science becomes important. In South Africa, we have several research organizations that have done amazing work. And every country needed scientists to deal with SARS-CoV-2. And so we were fortunate in that we could draw on people who had experience in HIV, experience in TB, to call them, call upon. In my own institute here, it's RHI. We had a major discussion about what we should do. As a research institution, we all agreed that we should be then watching what's happening and very quickly putting our hands up to do research. The Solidarity Trial um, recruited hospitals. I think there are 200 hospitals around the world now uh, contributing to Solidarity. Um, as South Africa, we contributed. We had 14 hospitals across South Africa. It's a very efficient way to do research. You're studying many things, and if any one of them worked, you know, you were lucky. You know, because of the pressure of time, people haven't gone and said, let's invent a brand new drug. What everyone has done, and artificial intelligence has been used to look at this, is to look at ex all the existing drugs, thousands and thousands of molecules, and saying, which one looks likely to have activity against COVID-19? And then a few were pulled out. They were evaluated in the laboratory. If they were showed activity in the laboratory, then they were taken into clinical trials. And that's what we've seen with a lot of drugs. Hydroxychloroquine, they studied dexamethasone, and several others. We've had disappointments. Drugs that we really thought would be very good, like chloroquine, didn't turn out to, to, to be so good. Remdesivir has some effect, not as huge as, as we might have liked, but something like a steroid called dexamethasone, which has been around for a long time, is, is very accessible in terms of price, that has proved to be really life-saving in, in hospital settings. The most significant result was the one-third reduction in mortality and deaths as a result of the use of dexamethasone. I recall I was asked on national television, you know, in April or May last year, you know, when can we expect a vaccine? And I said, not for a while, was my answer. I said, it takes years to make a vaccine. You know, a, a quick vaccine will take six years, a quick vaccine development. Instead of that, we had our first vaccine in under a year. And that was because we were able to take things off the shelf, change them and develop them. What the world had done in terms of preparedness was to start to think about what would be a platform that we could literally quickly change in the event that we have a new pathogen, we've never seen it before, and it's clearly a major global problem. The platform is, is something where, you know, everyone's heard about, say, an mRNA platform or an adenovirus platform, where you can take a vaccine and you can say, I can change it now from being a vaccine for that disease to this disease. These vaccines, we're using a complete completely new technology, a technology we've never used before. And it did go actually extremely quickly. Quite a lot of um, countries invested, the US for example invested, China, Russia, the, the state invested. That really accelerated the, the development of, of vaccines. I remember the day, it was the 9th of November, that the message came through that the Pfizer vaccine was at least 90% effective. I said, what? Not just a vaccine, but one that's so highly effective. It is really a testimony to great science and to amazing individuals who put their heart and soul together to make these vaccines and to test them and to show that they work. I think there are many things that South Africa can be really, really proud of, and the world. And is it perfect? Absolutely not. But I do think that if we take South Africa, we have seen people really roll up their sleeves and work 24-7. And perhaps people in the public don't realize that. 